This commenter would like a plain, simple explanation using simple everyday words as to what electricians mean when they say, this green wire is for clearing faults. Let's get into it. Okay, this is representative of the transformer. We tap into the transformer three times. A connection from end to end will give you 240 volts. A connection from end to middle will give you 120 volts. The electricity is trying to balance itself back out from here to either one of these connections. The lower the resistance is between one of these connections and the other, the more the electricity will flow. So if instead of running a wire straight to here, which would be an immense amount of electricity, which would be a short circuit, a bunch of sparking, we bring a hot wire to this side of a load and then to this side of the load. And it tries to balance itself out through the load, which provides resistance. So the proper path of the circuit is from this connection through the load and back on that connection. If something was to go wrong and a connection was made between these two, it would bypass the load, take a shorter path for a short circuit. In that event, there'd be so much electricity flowing here that this would melt and be a fire hazard. So in line in this wire, we put a fuse or a circuit breaker. So if something was to happen, whether it was a short circuit or the wrong load was put in, that too much electricity was flowing here, creating a fire hazard, this would break the circuit and open it. So a regular circuit operating properly. This is a regular circuit operating properly. It's going out on the black, across the bulb, completing its circuit back on the neutral. Most electrical appliances can't be just open like this, so there's a housing surrounding all the components holding them together. So we encase the load in a housing. We want the housing to be safe to touch. So if something was to go wrong in the load through de a defect or damage, this hot wire maybe got chafed on the connection, but this hot wire can make a, an electrical connection to the housing. And now the housing becomes energized. This connection connecting the hot wire to the housing is called a fault. We want to have a system that when this fault occurs, the circuit breaker kills the circuit. So what we do in the main panel, we make a connection here at the, where the service disconnect is. And we run a wire from the neutral to the housing. And this is the equipment ground, the green wire or the bare wire. So now when a fault develops, whether it's chafed here or this wire becomes loose, can you see that a fault connection between the hot wire and the casing creates a short circuit by passing the load? back to the neutral, allowing a nearly unlimited amount of current to flow in this path back to the neutral, which will overload the breaker and kill the circuit. So now, because this can be a fuse or a circuit breaker, the code refers to it as an overcurrent device. Now, is it clear that the fault path is from the fault point on the circuit back to the electrical source? Not back to the earth, not back to the dirt. It's from the fault back to the source. So the term the code would use is to clear a fault is to facilitate the opening of an overcurrent protection device. What adds confusion is we call it a ground. So people think the earth is involved in it and somehow the earth is part of that. The earth doesn't necessarily have to be part of it. And when the earth gets involved in it, you won't open a current, you won't open an overcurrent device. If the earth becomes involved in the fault path, the way it goes is, so you dropped a live wire in a puddle of water. The current would energize the earth and it would track over to the closest ground rod, go up the ground rod, up the grounding electrical conductor and get back to the neutral and then back to the source to complete a circuit. But that won't open a breaker. That won't overload a breaker. The earth has too much resistance in it. It's not a short circuit. The earth has become a new load, a new set of resistance. Something like a GFI will trip on that because that's not working on over current that's not working on too much electricity that's working on electricity going where it's not supposed to but it's better if the earth isn't involved because it removes the resistance of the earth and allows us to have a short circuit that will open over current devices and this distinction that the earth isn't necessarily part of it that it could be part of a fault path but if it's an effective fault path that is effectively going to open up over current devices the earth shouldn't even be part of it so 
the definition has been changed a lot over the years, and I really like the definition in the 23 code for what is an effective ground fault path because the word earth is not even in the definition. Let's look. All right, we're in the 23. Now, if you go to definitions, you have a ground fault path, but you have an effective ground fault path. So if you read the definition for effective ground fault path, an intentionally constructed low impedance electrically conductive path designed and intended to carry current during ground fault events from the point of the ground fault on the wiring system to the electrical supply source that it facilitates the operation of an overcurrent protection device. There's no mention of the earth in this definition. But if you go to ground fault path, it does say the earth is in part of the path or could be part of the path. It's still going to the source, but the earth is listed as part of the path. But looks what happens when you go to 250. In 250 grounding and bonding, they talk more about um, effective ground fault path. And the last line is, the earth shall not be considered as an effective ground fault path. If you went to school a long time ago, and part of what I'm saying doesn't sound familiar, the definition is constantly changing. So the wording is becoming more and more clear, but it's always trying to get across the point that the path is to the source, not the earth. The earth, the earth is not an effective ground path. All right, you asked for it in plain English. I tried to talk as slow as I could and as thoroughly as I could. I don't think this is going to get a million views because it's not a very fun video, but I wanted to clear up as much mystery as possible. And the next mystery be is why do we drive ground rod? Why do we drive ground rods if they're not involved in effective fault paths? The short answer, and I really want to do a better video on this because um, I feel like I'm even missing some of the things. But the general idea for ground rods is to help dissipate lightning or give a path for lightning, but to dissipate static electricity charges that build up between different things, to give a path for that to discharge into the earth because that type of current lightning and the static will flow to the earth because the earth is its source. It's the electricity from a transformer that won't flow into the earth. All right, thank you very much.